I'm not talking too much about memories, but of course, uh, how, what, where to use the memories and see, let's say, surface space and embedded surface space is an area where memories are really widely used and a lot of memories are used. And we're quite proud to be into, uh, just introduced here to the Micron Industrial Cushion Partner Program. So we're, it's quite happy. For us, it's important to have reliable sources, really rugged extended temp memories. That's a key for our applications, for this type of applications. And I'd like to introduce a brand new form factor. So a uh, computer on module, but don't be afraid. I will explain what it is in detail. The computer module at the end, as you see here on the screen, that's this little thing. In fact, this is a complete, let's say, PC. It includes the memories, of course, yes, can be memory modules, can be soldered down memory, whatnot, all of that. But the beauty is that this whole PC is going to be installed into a customized carrier board. Everything which is, let's say, particular for a certain requirement, for a certain application, maybe you have to control an ultrasonic head or you have to control engines or you name it, that's functionality which you don't find on a standard computer board. On the module, this functionality is not available either, but the module can interface to this secondary board, to the carrier board, where all this special stuff is done. Even you see crazy shapes, all of this, whatever the application requires can be solved. The beauty of those computer module concept is that it's not a single source thing. It's an open standard. That's all what we support. There are different standards, and today I'm going to talk about COMHPC. That's the latest one with the highest performance. But all of those standards, you name it, is if it's ComExpress, ComHPC, uh, Smart, Q7, all of those share the same ideas of the module concept. So you don't have to handle everything by yourself. You can trust on a, on a core module. And this, of course, fastens your time to market. It's less development cost. Overall, it's much less risk. Even nowadays, with all this availability stuff, you can change between different module vendors, even between different module technologies or chip technologies. That's kind of easy. In these days where there's a design to availability, this can become even more important, I have to say. Uh, of course, faster reaction to market trends, you can create one carrier board and scale with different CPU modules, even with different generation of CPUs. A low power, let's say cheap model, latest technology, high-end model, just by changing the module and you have a complete range of products out of that. Conga Tech itself is creating those standards as well. I'm part of the PICMIC consortium to create those stuff and the latest one is also supporting the server technologies. You see a little rendering here where a lot of memories are there. In the past the memory capacity was kind of limited to something on ComExpress to something like 96, maybe sometimes 128 gigabytes. Here we can scale up to one terabyte. That's really server class. Also the CPUs really scale up to the to the high performance Xeon class here, that's really a lot of performance. Where do you need it? At the edge. Servers must move to the place where the data happens. And the place where the data happens is not always a friendly environment. Just think about, let's say, a 5G base station or so. It's somewhere outdoor. If you have to install climate, cooling, whatnot, it's going to be expensive. If you have a rugged module which uh, can survive this, let's say, plus 85 down to minus 40, that's a big advantage at the end. Conga Tech, as mentioned, creates those standards together with the, with the committees. And just to be important, this is ComHPC is not a replacement for the existing ComExpress. It's really a new class which totally goes on top. Why, why was it needed to uh, develop something new? Of course, it's a drive for memory capacity, I just mentioned, but it's also the technology. So interfaces get much faster. You see on the top left, so PCI Express performance is growing almost any, any other year. It's doubling the performance. Previous standards cannot catch up with those things. So a new standard was necessary. Also, uh, the Ethernet speeds went up quite a lot. USB, you all know USB 4 actually, so those are tremendous things, even the display interfaces. So we, we are up to 20, uh, 20 gigabits per second for display for 8K, high resolution, high color depth. That's crazy. And even technology is changing. You see this uh, classic eye diagram here where the high-speed signals are, are there. 
it's no longer digital on and off. So with the latest generation of PCI Express, we have multi-levels. So a lot of new challenges, but all of those challenges are, let's say, already pre-solved in a form of module. On a server module, what interfaces you got available? You have PCI Express lanes. I think that's one of the most important interface. On the server side, up to 64 PCI Express lanes, up to one terabyte of DRAM. So we have the connectors of high density, 800 pins. So we have a lot of other IOs. I have a complete list later on. Very important is also scalability on the Ethernet. So Ethernet is no longer just, a, let's say, 100 megabit, uh, one gigabit. So the 100 megabit Ethernet are kind of, uh, 100 gigabit Ethernet are kind of standard, actually. Of course, those are bundled. It's four times 25 uh, are combined to a 100. So that's a lot of possibilities. And servers requires management. So a remote management, platform management, that's also part of the specification. There's, let's say, IPMI or Redfish implementation, but not a full-blown one. We talk about edge servers, not about a complete data center to be controlled. We would use the feature set to, a, let's say, something more handy, which makes life much easier. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Coma HPC is also available in different sizes. So the typical server sizes with the full, uh, full memories, uh, full-size DRAMs, uh, or 160 by 160 or even 200 by 160. So you see, that's a one terabyte stuff. But on the client side, the differentiation server to client is also the feature set. You have much more display interfaces. So there's no display interfaces on the servers. And those can scale down quite a lot to a much more handy size. Of course, it's not that much power consumption, so you can reduce it. Overall, so there's a, a, lot, a complete lineup here from Conga Tech about, about all the products here from small scale. All sizes are on our, on our product portfolio already. All the technologies from A to C, I just want to focus on a, on a very few. That's the uh, so-called Ice Lake, Intel Ice Lake processor is a Xeon D, so which scales up to 10 cores. Quite good performance, a lot of uh, PCI Express lines as you see, and it's, it's featuring so uh, four times 25 gigabits. So, of course, you cannot scale up that much. We see four memory sockets, but we see eight memory socket version and a 20 core. Of course, that's much more of a beast. And again, this can be installed quite easily. Of course, it supports the, the registered TIMs for, for more, more safety, security, and has all of the other interfaces. So it's really the core of a customized server, I would say. Nice application example here. You can even combine multiple of those uh, modules on, on one carrier. That's an example from the University Bielefeld together with Crispmon, a server company and they created this carrier board which is live at our booth by the way in, in hall 5. Uh, there's one server module on front on the front side and two client modules and all those modules are interconnected by 10g ethernet and by pci express so there are pci express switches uh, ethernet switches on the carrier board of course having three different intel modules does not make that much sense other than maybe scale the performance but the beauty of this concept is Coma HPC is not limited to Intel architecture. You can uh, plug in, let's say, FPGAs as accelerators. You can plug in GPUs. All of those are or become available also on Coma HPC form factors. And other than this, let's say, not very practical plug-in cards which, which stand up. It's not a very rugged, not very industrial solution. You can really create something very compact on there. And as those servers are really on the, let's say, low power side, you can even go for passive cooled solutions. You see the typical cooling application is here. Uh, on top of the CPU and on the DC-DC converters, there's, we call this the uh, heat pipe adapter. The silver things are the heat pipes, which transmits the heat completely without fans uh, to the outside of the chassis. So, which means we can make complete sealed chassis, which is important for edge servers at the end. And you can make it complete passive cooled. Fans are always an issue when it comes to reliability, long times or uh, long long term things. Even for extended temperature range ranges, this is possible. Maybe the chassis need to be a little bigger if you have a hundred watt CPU or so, but. That's the concept which uh, really draws a lot of attendance here from the markets. 
In order to ease the design of a carrier board, there are, uh, there's a complete design guide also from the PicMic available, which explains all the interfaces in detail, how to route it, what's the maximum trace length, all of this stuff to make life as easy as possible. And of, on, a, of, on top of it, so there are reference carrier boards from Kongatech, for example, or from other companies. And we also provide the complete schematics for that. If you want to start your own carrier board design, you can start with an evaluation carrier board, use the schematics and the design materials, and just take what you like, uh, remove what you don't like, and add what's special. That's a quick and easy start. And of course, we have the complete support team behind to make things happen. Also for the coolings, so it has to work with some cooling, the hot CPUs. So there are different choices here for active coolings, passive coolings, you see all of this. And also for heat spreaders. The standard defines a kind of heat spreader which is the same across the board. Whatever vendor you choose, there will be a heat spreader. Heat spreader at the end is just a thermal interface to a system cooling. And it's always the same. Whatever you put on top of it might be water cooling, might be whatever direct uh, attached to a, to a housing or so. It's the same even if you change vendors. So uh, third party uh, vendors are always possible. That's very, very important not to be dependent on a single supplier. Especially nowadays, you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, supplies are not that easy and having the, the sources, uh, multiple sources are important nowadays. And I talked about many cores. What, what should you do with a 20 core CPU? Of course, the operating system might support it, but maybe one operating system doesn't, is not optimized for whatever you want to do it. You can mix and match all the operating systems. So, uh, uh, Conga Tech subsidiary real-time systems, they make a real-time hypervisor. It's a virtualization at the end, uh, which is not right. It's a partitioning of a system. So it's even deeper than virtualization. Virtualization has a software layer on top. Partitioning is really a bare metal hypervisor, which means it just boots up the system, it, it separates it into the IOs, the memories, of course the cores, and then it's out of the game. Which means you can install multiple different operating systems. One, let's say the HOS, which handles the Ethernet, takes care about data security. See, uh, Artos maybe, maybe does the control for the inputs and the outputs, or robot control, or something like that. The Windows maybe is the user interface, and and the Linux maybe does the uh, image analysis or the AI applications. All of this can be can be matched into one system. It's a system consolidation approach. It's not four boxes you need. It's just one box, much easier to be maintained, and you have still the full flexibility.